Hi, it is Wednesday, so let's get started. This is from Alex in New Jersey. I found the subject of gnomes, elves, trolls, leprechauns, fairies, etc. quite interesting, which brings me to the opposite side of the spectrum. Have you ever encountered extraterrestrial earthbound spirits or any being that is not deemed of this earth or dimension? Well, the dimensions, we can go back to the, the fairies and everything because they are in a different dimension. I have never seen a spirit of an alien that I know of. I, no, I, I don't think, I believe in them. I have seen UFOs, which is a whole different kind of thing. But, I mean, that is not even something I want to touch upon. But... I have never seen a ghost of an alien to my knowledge, so that I don't know. And you, the other part is you've only talked about land-based earthbound spirits, from humans to dogs to even trolls. What about those of the seas or sky? Have you encountered earthbound spirits that are birds or sea creatures, such as a sea lion or dolphin? I know you probably don't do deep sea diving. You're right, I don't. But I am limiting to ocean animals you can see from a boat, the shore, or even in an aquarium. You know, I no, I don't think I have, or I've never paid any attention to it. You know, I wouldn't put any of this stuff, you know, in Lake Erie. I mean, what, a ghost of a walleye? Never seen that. Um... Of course, I've been to the ocean. I love the ocean, but I've never paid any attention to that. You know, I don't think so. And even, and I've been to the Cleveland Aquarium and I've never seen any ghost of anything there either. It's funny because I was just talking about this today on the, the talk at 10 o'clock in the morning. And they asked if I ever saw an insect ghost. No, no, I haven't. I think that... The lowest on the, on the totem pole that I've ever seen was probably my pygmy hedgehog. I saw her spirit when she died. But I've seen snakes and fox and moose and horses and just a chicken. But I've never seen, uh, not, not to my knowledge, they probably exist, especially uh, dolphins and maybe whales. But dolphins are so smart. So, they probably do, but I, I don't know. So, this one is from Helen in Pennsylvania. Uh, Marianne, when did you first realize that you could help earthbound spirits to access the white light? Was this something that came naturally to you, or did you have to practice? This is interesting, because... All the time doing this, I've never had that question, this question asked me. Um, I didn't realize that I could do this until I was around eight years old. And my grandmother had taken me to New York to clear a house. And um, the girl didn't have white light around her. That was the ghost. And that's when I explained to my grandmother that about this white light. So grandma actually taught me how to make the white light and how to use it. And um, yeah, it took me a long time to, to make it last long enough and then make it big enough for a spirit to walk into. So yeah, it, it did. It took a, a while to do, that, that's for sure. But thanks for the question, Helen. This one is from Zenith, that is her name, and she is in uh, Iowa. I have always been intrigued by the paranormal. I am fascinated by how many ghosts are earthbound. I always wonder if we are being watched. Um, the picture... I, reading your book and the picture in the one book where the lady was all blurry everybody else was clear 
And you said that that woman had, if I, I remember correctly, either a ghost or a curse on her. Now, I have several pictures of my friends and I, from graduation, my face was always blurry. Everyone else you could see fine. We are all standing together. This never made sense to me. Was this negative energy? Is this something that has affected me my entire life after graduation? I am asking because I've had some rough times and I often think of those pictures. I am not far from Cleveland. I would like to talk with you or maybe even spend time with you when you clear a house. Okay. I've always been curious about ghosts. Zenith, what we have to decide first is you could have either had a ghost or uh, an earthbound spirit attached to or negative energy. You said graduation. I don't know if this was graduation from college or from high school. Negative energy does not stick on anybody until they are 18 or over. So that maybe will maybe help you a little bit. Um, I don't know. I, I don't really, your, your, your state isn't that close to Ohio. And with the virus, I don't know, you know, if you want to come in, the first thing you need to do is call me and let's see if you've even got anything attached to you. Uh, before you, you know, we go any farther than that. And as far as coming with me when I clear houses, uh, no, that is not something that I do. Let's face it, think about it. If you had a ghost in your house and you invited me in to get rid of it, would you want me to bring people in with me to listen to what's going on? You know, sometimes the information is pretty personal. So I've never allowed that. I, I, and what good would it do except watching? So, but I need, give me a call, Zenith, and let's see if we can figure out what the heck is going on with you or if something is still going on with you. Uh, this is from Erica. And my uncle was found dead in his home a little over three years ago. He apparently died on a Saturday, but wasn't found until Monday. Ever since, I have been having uh, car problems, also with the truck that used to belong to the him. He left me a considerable amount of money in his will, as well as my sister, of which we both gave to our mother who needed the money very badly. At the time of his death, he was not on speaking terms with anybody else in his family. That included his children, wife, and I have also had really bad financial problems since I gave my mother the money. I wonder if he hasn't crossed over and he is angry with me for giving the money to my mother, which was his sister, which he did not want her to have. Uh, the whole situation has been difficult because I loved my uncle very much and I would hate that he's angry with me. Erica, here's another one that he could be angry that you did give your mother the money. That's a possibility when he was, you know, dead sent on nobody having it but you and your sister. Um, I can't tell from a letter, but I would doubt that he would, well, I shouldn't say that. Relatives can be sort of strange sometimes. I think what you need to do is give me a call and let's see if something's going on or come on Zoom and let me see on Zoom if you've got something going on. It'd be faster to come on that than for me, you know, for you to call because it would take at least six to eight weeks for me to call you back. So let's try that. This is from Macrina in Florida. Uh, my father, while he was alive, was a man with many psychological problems. He created insecurity and frustration in our lives, my two sisters, my mother, and I. Even after death of more than 12 years, our lives continue uh, to be tied to him and not in a good way. 
We think his death was not natural, that he was poisoned by one of his mistresses. Money reasons. But by circumstances, we could not verify it. We are in need to know if he is continuing with us. Uh, we have not been able to grow physically, mentally, spiritually since he died. Or maybe his hate for us due to a very big argument the last day that he died, making him stay. Any other reasons we would like to know? Wow. Okay. Got a couple things going on here. If he had mental problems, that could be one reason why he didn't cross over. If he was murdered, that could be another reason why he didn't cross over. If he was a very controlling person. That could be another reason why he didn't cross over. But from a letter, again, I cannot tell just from this letter. You seriously would have to call. And, and I would suggest if you call, call from the house where your mother is and you and your sister both be there. Uh, or sisters. That way, if he's attached to all of you, one of you, he would be there if he is earthbound. And that would be the best way for me to tell if uh, there's something going on or not. This one is... This one is from Judy. Um... I believe that something is very wrong for the past two years. Uh, although my husband thinks I'm nuts, I honestly believe we are being haunted, invaded, infested by my father-in-law. Infested, that's an interesting word to use. He passed away two years ago, and since then we've had several incidences of illnesses hanging over our house for eight weeks at a time. My daughter, my father, he had been hospitalized with unknown medical conditions. Our two-year-old son comes screaming into our bedroom in the middle of the night because he sees ghosts in his room. I could go on and on, but I think we really need help. I should also mention we inherited a large decorative photograph of my husband's grandmother when she was a little girl. I had a strong reaction to it, and once it was hung, I wanted it out of the house. My husband refused. Finally, a few months ago, I convinced him to send it to his sister, and is now in the garage attic of his sister's house. Is it possible for a picture to haunt a family? Whew. Okay. First of all, Judy, I would find it hard to believe that if your father-in-law didn't cross over, that he would do this to you guys. I mean, the letter before, if he was mental problems, I could see that happening in that family. But this family, you know, I, I and why would he scare his, you know, his two-year-old grandson? That would be awfully mean of him. I'm guessing that it is probably somebody other than your father-in-law. And here's the question. Have you or your husband dreamt of your father-in-law since he died? Um, if you did and he's been in a dream, then it is definitely not him. He has crossed over. As far as the old picture goes, sometimes ghosts are attached to these old pictures doesn't have to be the grandmother, but it could be somebody. And I don't know anybody, let's put it this way, I don't know a lot of people that actually like old photographs like that. They usually do creep people out. They're in that sepia colored or black and white, and they just don't look natural. So it may definitely, you know, there could be somebody attached to it. Now, if it went to his sister's house and she's got it in his attic or her attic, their ghost would not still be attached to it because who are they going to get energy from as it's sitting in an attic someplace? Nobody. So 
that person could still be at your house or be at the sister's house. So again, don't really know without a phone call. And I would try to do the phone call when your husband is in the house seeing it was his father. And we can see what's going on. Okay. Um, November Zoom is filled, but we are doing another one on December 11th, which is almost filled, so we just opened up December 21st. Uh, on December 19th, if everything isn't closed down, keep your fingers crossed that it's not, I will be at the Goddess Elite from 1 to 4 with all the charms and everything for those people that want Christmas gifts. And... Uh, I will be next Wednesday, which is the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. I will be on at 10 o'clock in the morning again taking questions. And I got some great letters from people that had problems with ghosts over the holidays, including New Year's Eve. There have been some good ones. So if you fall in that category and you would like to share what happened to your house with the ghost, um, Give me, write to me, and I'll be doing these letters probably two Wednesdays before Christmas. So get them out. You've got time yet to get me a letter, and we'll see what's going on or what went on. Please be safe and play by the rules. Wear your mask so we can get over this, and I will talk to you next Wednesday. Thanks.